Know the difference with Annex Wealth Management. Amy Bremer, a wealth manager at Annex Wealth Management, is back. Hey, Amy. Hey, Danny. We've covered some interesting topics, my friend. Today's might be a little touchy, helping support adult children. You ready to dive in on this? Let's do it. All right. We're going to start with some stats about empty nesters. This is the moms and dads at home. 40% are helping support adult kids. The average monthly expenditure $254. $254. I don't care who you are. That's a sizable chunk. Well, when you think about it month over month over month, that adds up to several thousand dollars a year. So most folks think that when they're empty nesters, meaning their kids moved out, their kids are off the payroll. But there's a lot of hidden expenses that are sticky, like the family cell phone plan. Some other folks help their kids out with rent, groceries, and student loan payments. A lot of, yeah, I see you wince your face. Yeah. Student loan payments, those are really expensive. They're paused right now, but according to our source data here, that's the fourth biggest expenditure that parents help their kids out with. Well, and wait till they start back up, right? Oh my gosh. Here's where we get into the uncomfortable spot, how to stop financially supporting adult children because you need to. Yeah, and this is such a tough one. I mean, this originally comes from a place of love. I mean, you, you love your kids, you want to help them succeed, and you think throwing them a little bit of cash here and there is going to do that, but it prevents them from living their own life and, you know, adulting, you know, hashtag adulting. It's easier, though, to start little by little. Maybe ask those kids for their 30 bucks a month for their cell phone bill. Don't just cut them off cold turkey because that's going to be a huge fall for the kid to make up. It's going to be expensive and difficult to overcome. I do see parents and cell phone bills back and forth with their kids or or different things. Now, I don't know if they're paying it, but it's happening. It's happening quite a bit. My stepson pays my husband, but we do it through our bank account. We all bank at the same bank, but we keep them on the plan because it's cheaper. We also have my father-in-law on our cell phone plan because it's cheaper. Now, collecting money from my father-in-law is a little bit, you know, here or there. He's not as reliable as my stepson. You got a little Jenga game. Yeah, right. right? Sandwich generation for sure. (laughs) Now, before you think Amy is just some sort of big old meanie, here's the meat and potatoes reason. By supporting adult children, folks, you are affecting your own retirement. How's that work? Yes. And it's the old adage of the flight attendants on the airplane, put your own mask on first before you help this person in the seat next to you. So a lot of this comes down to checking yourself first. How is your retirement fund going? Is it fully funded? Do you have your own credit card debt or your own car payments? Things like that. A lot of times families who help their children put their own financial health at risk. I see it quite often here at Annex when we help families on a one-on-one basis. Now, that's if the kids are in tough financial straits and you're able to do that. And if you're able to do that, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Probably a different conversation. You're not helping your kids by stepping in and doing it. It may be in the short term, like you said, if they're in a tough spot, but in the long term, those kids become dependent on that income from mom and dad, and it's not sustainable over time. Another example is when you have kids who are professionals and clearly have enough money to do it on their own, but it's really easy to show up at mom and dad's house, get the Costco card and go put gasoline on your (laughs) own at mom and dad's dime. Right. How about loans to adult children? Is it okay? Maybe if there's enforceable terms in place, you've got something written out? This is tricky, Danny. I'm really glad you brought it up. So loans, if it's just a verbal agreement, a little tricky. You want to write something down and have them sign a promissory note. Even if it's a Word document that says, I promise to pay back mom and dad 250 bucks a month, love, child. The challenge is if you charge interest or not. And this is where it gets a little tricky with the IRS. If you don't charge interest on your tax return, there's something that's called imputed interest, which again gets really tricky. And so we would want to talk with families on a one-on-one basis to guide them through that process. But most people don't report these loans on their tax return anyway. Now you're just kind of running the dice if you're going to get an audit or not. Adult children sometimes move in with parents, hopefully temporarily. Should there be a rent agreement in place? That is an, you have some good questions today, Danny. Well done. So it reminds me of an article I read several years ago on the internet of this 40-year-old guy living with his folks, and the guy would not move out. I Mom remember. And, yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. that nuts? Yeah. They had to take their kid to court to legally evict him. So rental agreement, eh, you know, take it on a case-by-case basis, but I mean, Garner, that was the extreme. Well, it's going to be more than the $254, too. I, I think I read when and somebody lives at your place, it's three, 400 bucks a month just because they're consuming stuff and using the washer dryer and energy and heat. 
Yes. Yeah, there's definitely an, an, a cost related to that. And if you can recoup some, it's a good agreement if your kids live at home because you can charge them less in rent that they'd pay at market. Yeah. And then you can get a little bit extra cash on the side. So if you can come to a mutually beneficial arrangement, I don't see how that's a problem. But just don't have to evict your kid. <laughs> Is this a place we step into with our clients? A little bit. It's a little bit challenging to navigate those situations with families. It's hard, but Amy has outlined the case to at least consider taking some necessary steps. We are ready to help with financial, retirement, tax, and estate planning. First stop, AnnexWealth.com. Click that Get Started button. Amy Bremer, Wealth Manager at Annex Wealth Management. Good stuff. Thanks for joining us. Always my pleasure, Danny.